The 10-Minute Drill. This is a big one. Covered by Universal Roof and Contracting. The difference is universal. On 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. You know, uh, hey, oh, yeah. every year around here, because of the pitiful job of prospecting and getting us a good one, we are always at least somewhat in tune with the quarterback draft classes. Yes. Right? I mean, seems I... Seems like it. The name, you know, the name, we go all the way back. It just seems like we're aware of the names that are a part of that draft class. Right. And and each quarterback draft class is hit or miss. It's filled with guys that, you know, you claim or some you claim are going to be a star. Others you're sure aren't going to be a star. And one of those guys that was in the discussion, I can even remember. And and I say, I bring this up to start things off just to kind of speak to the difficulty um, of hitting that guy, especially for the bad teams. Mm-hmm. But one of those guys that I saw him as high as like uh, at one point of the mock draft process up in the maybe not even the top pick, the top five. Ultimately, I think he went in the second round. Yes. But Deshaun Kaiser, remember him? Oh, they loved him. He yeah. grew, he was a fast riser towards the end. Yeah. Well, he's been waived again. How many teams has Deshaun Kaiser been exactly. on? Exactly. Six. Um, many. Kaiser claimed off Raiders by the uh, Raiders uh, off waivers by the Raiders last September. Uh, he was um, a Brown second round pick in 2017. Uh, he played with the Packers in 2018. Oh, really? Not that many. And then Oakland. Yeah. And then Oakland. But he really hadn't played much of uh, anywhere. And, and uh, it just goes, it just speaks to the difficulty in identifying and, and developing that guy. Yeah, Deshaun Kaiser was big time. I mean, he, he was, people were high on him. Yeah. And he's terrible. I mean, he's terrible. He'll never, never amount to anything in the NFL. And, um, you know, so that's why I always take a grain of salt in Jordan, the Jordan Love stories, right? Those yeah, guys that are yeah. supposedly going to Speaking of football players, uh, tough night for Earl Thomas, apparently. <laughs> well, you know, Earl shouldn't do orgies when the wife's going to come over. That's all I'm saying. You know, Earl shouldn't go with his brother and two, I imagine, uh, rent, a, rent a chicks in some Airbnb and then let Mrs. Earl and Mrs. Brother uh, come over with guns. Oof. And then wow. I guess the story goes, and there might even be some video out there of they're like chasing each other around a parked car, she with a yeah. gun and he with a knife. Yeah, I don't know. It was crazy, but uh, yeah. So anyway, Earl Thomas, uh, little domestic incident there. Uh, the Ravens uh, star defensive back. So that happened uh, overnight. Big talk today, though, is a lot of what is going on in terms of sports coming back. Uh, where are we? What, what's going to happen? MLB seems like they're getting ready to at least unveil a plan. Um, uh, a return to play, I guess, is the best way to do it. NBA having an all-player call tomorrow. Um, so things, uh, golf already prepared to come back, uh, looks like. And again, we're coming back, and we're not, you know, I mean, this stuff hasn't gone away. So, you, again, you have to continue to you know, practice as best you can the, the guidelines uh, put out by everybody, and, and, and away we'll go. I saw uh, Telvin ple- pled not guilty to his charges. Well, I mean, when you've only got two choices, not guilty or guilty, and yeah. guilty sends you back to jail, you re- you're left with not guilty. But yeah. I, I don't see how, yeah. you know, this, this was a painstaking amount of, of investigation. Right. They have everything in order when they made the decision, so – in some form or fashion, uh, Telvin's going to pay the piper for having sex with a child. Yes, yes. Uh, Not allowed. S- scheduled day in the National Football League. Lots of talk besides the non-conference uh, as to, like, you know, uh, are the stadiums going to be ready in Vegas and L.A.? Our team's going to double up. Uh, they have continued to work on those stadiums through shutdowns that other – yeah. There were some delays, have, though. Yeah. And, and, and there's teams from the east going out west, and is it better to let them – Stay there for two weeks or and be in a hotel sort of isolated, or is it better for them to go there, play, come back to what they they know? So uh, that also remains to be seen. And, and 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 obviously, a return to the facilities is coming. Um, and by the way, we should, what we should point out here: mm-hmm. your thoughts, our thoughts, anyone's thoughts on uh, other than the decision makers uh-huh. on how contagious it is or how dangerous it is or what they could do, those don't matter. I mean, if we're going to talk about this from a sports day, if we're some political right. show and you want right. to argue, that's one thing. Right. But we're just going to deal with what these guys are going to deal with to make the decisions. It's not what when Dan and I would start the leagues. 
Yeah. Because we'd start them at different times. Yes. Our mentalities are a little bit different. Yeah, I would say so. Which is fine. Yeah, that's fine. And we still get along somewhat. Well, you know. Too many people out there now, if you disagree, like in, in the world, like I, my only foray, I don't know how you, I'll never, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've almost convinced myself to get on Twitter and I hear a horror story like, I mean, I'll just never do it. The no, you should. are too yeah. ugly. But just being on, and I'm not even talking about with me, just the discourse between people. We've, when did we become, if you don't agree with me, you're an idiot beehole and I know everything. Oh. When did that happen? Oh. That's new, isn't it? But whole. Thank yes. you. Isn't that new, Hick? Uh, probably, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be the, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying it's social media. I'm just saying I'm in town. The American mentality now is in my way or the highway, or you're just an arrogant jerk. Yeah. I, that just seems to be the, well, the worst, you know, again, not to get political, but the worst of them are the politicians. So they go back to set the tone. Yeah, yeah. They set the tone instead of saying, okay, well, I don't really agree with that, but we'll sit down and talk about it. They take shots at each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, they, you know, we sort of follow along on stuff like that. But anyway, I'm just, I, for me, if we can get sports back, obviously it's a huge deal, and that's what, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm headed. And I know some people still doubt. They, they you know, again, the questions remain: What happens if, uh, you know, a player gets coronavirus? Well, I, I don't, you know, pro- what does the team do? What, you know, how do you react? There's, a, and again, this, how is- many tests are they going to be? You know, is there enough testing for? Uh, uh, people to be tested once a week if they're on a sports team. I don't know. You know, those are all questions that the, the higher ups are all going to figure out and answer as we move along here and head into the summer. Does this does the heat and humidity really um, uh, uh, help in, in staving off? Uh, Again, they, uh, these are, are these major league baseball teams going to play their games at home or are they going to play them? You know, should the Hickens take their vacation this summer or not? These are all questions that we're prices are taking theirs. So we got two already. Yeah. They're, they're they're happening. I I hope that I don't fly to nowhere though, because the one in the middle of July, you'd like to think by then there's some normalcy. But gosh, I, you keep thinking that, and who knows? It just yeah. keeps getting pushed back uh, further in in some regards. Uh, this is too good to pass up. This is not a sports headline, but oh. this features one of you two's favorite names. So I'm going to ask uh, each uh, of you. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, if uh, either one of Jackie you, Jackie Ivanko, have ever used a butt mask, uh, does who? anyone know what a butt mask is? I've heard the term. You have, yes. You know who is it? It's Kesha uh, beef or Keisha? Kesha, Kesha. I thought it was Kesha. I should have gone with my gut there. Should have. Um, apparently, Kesha is very fond of the butt mask. I didn't know there was such a thing as a butt mask, but well, it was I, invented by Mark Sanchez. Uh, she gets it maybe to pre- right. to prevent the butt fumble, but uh, the butt mask um, she applies every night. Well, she doesn't. Uh, what brings her happiness here in the lockdown, she allows her boyfriend to apply her butt mask. But I, I don't care how it's applied and what it does for each of those involved. I'm just curious what the hell a butt mask is. Well, it's baby smooth. I know that. Is it? Well, so I did the research because that's really what I wanted. In fact, um, well, what is it? Maybe uh, in five days you'll find yourself to be a, a happy owner of a couple of body butt masks, which retail for $9 a pop. Each mask consists of two separate sheets, one for each butt cheek. You simply oh. apply it to clean skin, leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes, then remove. It's formulated with citrus to brighten and rejuvenate your butt skin. Wonderful. I mean, is that butt not you know, the, is the butt not the one part of your body that you really don't have to worry about too many people seeing? My butt skin's been feeling a little yeah, kind of saggy and tired. It needs a rejuvenation. As well as her nightly butt mask, Kesha says she's uh, taken to dyeing her eyebrows, too, with men's beard dye. Is Kesha the one that used to always wear the... Like paint all over and stuff, or no? She, yeah, she was very. Did I see weird. her on Saturday Night Live where she was all painted, or no? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. She's she's very unusual. Yeah, I'd say she kind of fell off the map, and she does religious butt masking, so that by nature makes you don't we all kind of strange? Mm. Um, no, we we don't at all, actually. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> uh, Greg Hardy is on the. Fight card this weekend. Is he? Yeah, the former Carolina Panther, Dallas Cowboy, who um, I think beat the hell out of Austin Lane in a fight, didn't he? I don't former know. Former Jaguar Austin I know Lane. He beat him. Didn't Austin Lane fight Greg um, Hardy? Yes, he man, did. And that's a tough business, man. I mean, Austin Lane will beat the hell out of 99% of America, and you step into a, 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 you know, a match like that, and it's uh, rough. Now, Unfortunately, you, if you're going to see Austin Lane, you'll have to see him on television. I'm asking two non-UFC fans. I probably know the answer better than you do, so I'm going to ask each of you just in case. Uh-huh. The way these UFC cards work, I believe the first couple of three fights are actually on ESPN you can watch. And then I think it becomes a pay-per-view card as you get more toward the main event. So okay. 
if that's the case, and Greg Hardy's uh, bout may be on television uh, before they uh, before they go into the to the pay per view card. Okay, who is the uh, who is the um, headliner this weekend? Jackie Ivanka. Uh, no, it's the Ferguson and uh, it's Tony Ferguson um, against the Gaethje. I think his name Gaethje. How many different fights will they have on Fight Night? Um. Also, the Sejudo Cruz Sejudo was one of the fighters too. Is pretty well done. I think they usually do about eight or ten. Hick, to be honest with you, eight to ten. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six for this one. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I, 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 um, I think that they typically do, you know, between six and ten. Best news of all about this, not not they'll be coming back. Yeah, not that they're being here in Jacksonville. So you know that's. Neither here nor there. The fact that they're gonna because it because we can't go and you know so. But well, they're the coming only, back. That's the only the, the only small there there are a couple of consolations, and because you, you forget about this, I wouldn't you suspect that tonight uh, tomorrow night's or Saturday night's UFC fights are going to be among the most heavily watched UFC fights all year. Yes, there's nothing going on. You're right. You're isolated. You're quarantined. Okay. It's the only sport. Like I, you know, I'm not going to pony up if it's not. McGregor, personally, uh-huh. or Bones Jones or one of those guys, but I'll watch the undercard. If I'm home, and I'd rather watch a UFC undercard than another movie, where I, uh, as opposed to like Korean baseball I got, or, or, or e-racing. I mean, I got no interest in those things. <laughs> Looks like Greg Hardy's squaring off with Jorgon de Castro. Oh. oh. Uh, Greg's uh, nickname, the Prince of War. Uh, Jorgon, he's called the Mad Titan. Now, what is his? Uh, what is Greg Hardy's record? Has five, he been successful? I he's guess five, he has. He's five and two, and I, one five of his, and one, one uh, NC, whatever that means. Well, he got uh, no contest. He, well, it was a fight he would have won, and or, like, beat no the guy. chance. No, he beat the guy when he was down already. Remember, it was one of his first uh, fights. He got disqualified, or he, he he had to take the loss, or, or Nola Katendre. But I don't know who beat him. That'd be a good question. But I, I Greg Hardy is a I you know if Greg Car- Hardy's in town this weekend and you see him, I would just look away. I would just walk right past that guy. Oh dear. Yeah, that guy, will, you know, especially if you're about, you know, a five foot six woman, there's pictures of what he'll do to you. How can you, um, <clears throat> when, when I'm looking at like the uh, biggest needs of these uh, NFL teams as we kick it around here. And by the way, we have a prize pack coming up today, Beef. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Dan. It's a Mother's the, Day prize pack. At the end of the 10 minute drill, yeah, big right. Mother's Day prize pack. More right. on that we'll, in a minute. We'll tell you that in just a second. Hard, I'm getting some Hardy on pay per view, 12 fights total. ESPN Plus to start, then some ESPN fights, then pay per view. So there that's how it'll work. All right. Um, how can you, if, if looking at the biggest needs of these teams, right? Okay. If I'm a team and I look at my biggest need and they put my biggest need as backup quarterback, then I think I got one heck of a team. That's, it, it, could you argue that that's the Jaguars' biggest need and they don't have a heck of a team? I would not. I would never argue that the backup quarterback is a is a big need. I don't think it should ever be your biggest need. Yeah, well, if it is, then you have a bigger need. You don't have a good starting quarterback. So, All right? What, guess the team in the AFC that's biggest need is the backup quarterback. You know, you immediately I don't know if it's their biggest need, but the team that has the biggest need of backup quarterback to me will be the Steelers. Well, that's a good guess. Uh, they say the Denver Broncos, which, you know, the Why? Denver Broncos, they played well towards the end. Uh, the Broncos had a terrific draft. I think Locke went like 4-1. and one. Running out of it with Jerry Judy and K.J. Hamler, two wide receivers. Exactly zero excuses for Drew Locke to not play well in 2020. Locke, and in theory, these new weapons should unlock the deep passing game that is his strong suit. However, the Broncos also have no, no real backup of a claim. They're rolling with Jeff Driscoll. He's okay. He's a fine NFL backup, isn't he? Am I wrong? Uh, well, I don't mean to say if you want him to win important games, then no, he's not. Would you rather have Joe Flacco as your backup or Jeff Driscoll at this point? Uh, probably Flacco. Yeah. I don't really want either one of them. Again, if if, if we're going to them, we're And then the other thing is, uh, you know, and again, I understand that. I guess the Broncos got A.J. and they got Jarrell Casey, too. Oh, this offseason, yeah. Yeah, so maybe they are a good team. Maybe they will compete. Um, Yeah, I don't know. So Jeff Driscoll, what has he done in his – he started a couple games last year, didn't he, for Detroit? Yeah, I don't 59% think fifty-nine percent of his passes right. for he's got ten touchdowns and six picks in his career. He play I think he has a start for the Bengals before yeah. uh he played nine Bengals. games for the Bengals in eighteen. So he's okay. He's nah, not yeah, nothing, he's, you're not winning. He's not gonna like come in and keep no, but it. I would think if you push. if your guy's missing two games, he could yeah, get you Well that's and he, he probably could. And that's sort of to me the mark of a yeah, that's okay fair. backup. I don't you know. Yeah, I mean, do you want to give a back does any 
Yeah, why pay a lot of money? Are you going to give a guy nine? Remember these, some of these guys get nine? Remember Chase Daniel? Chase Daniel. Or... That, that's kind of um, that's kind of getting I, passe. I don't get that. Like, yeah. like, like Dalton got three. Yeah. Three million. That's yeah. it. Which, by the way, if the Jags had offered him five, would he have come here? Well, or no? I, I, you can tell where how far down the list the Jags are for Andy Dalton. If he even talked to the Jags, because, look, you could infer mm-hmm. by him taking that Dallas job that he's okay transitioning to the second part of his career where he'll be a backup now, a veteran backup yeah. for the rest of his career, right? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. could, you could assume that. Go make $3 million in next year, three and a half, then four, and, you know, play five years as Dak Prescott's backup, live right there in your own hometown, pocket another... 10, 20 million. I mean, that would seem like a good strategy, and it would almost seem like the strategy that he was going with. But by what Andy Dalton says, this is a one year deal. He still wants to start in the league. To bring me back to my point, you must really hate the Jags then if you sign with the Cowboys instead. I mean, what's the fastest path to a starting job in this league? Yeah. Suit up for the teal and black. You'll get there pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I don't know how not playing in Dallas is going to make you a more attractive option as a starter. Well, I would assume that if I'm Andy Dalton, the perception is if one of the things that maybe, you know, no disrespect to Gardner Minshew, but I, if I'm going to back somebody up, if you're telling me I'm going to be the backup, I'm going to go back up Dak Prescott, have a chance to win, and I've made a lot of money and go home, or I come to Jacksonville and I haven't heard great things and – I, I'm, I'm going to be the backup to Gardner Minshew. Well, if, well, I, if, I, if, I, if, if you're telling me I'm not as good as Gardner Minshew, then what the heck am I even well, doing? Well, that's in the what I, that's a conversation. I was like, hey, I got news for you guys, and I'm sure you're happy with Minshew. Maybe he's got a bright future. I'm better than this guy. I've been to the Pro Bowl three times. So if I come here, I'm starting. So yeah, yeah. up to you. That's call, what I'm saying. Yeah, I call know. me if you're interested. Yeah. And, and I have respect for handling it that way if he did. And, yeah. and he, may, he may very well have. There aren't a lot. Listen, there's also this. All right, let me let me. I'll I'll take my furlough right now, if you're Andy Andy Dalton. And I'll requeue this next year where there's job openings, right? The job's all filled, but the seven million, like somebody seven million, three million. No, he's making three million. The right. seven million has playing time that he's never going to unless unless he gets hurt. If Dak gets hurt, then and yeah, it's a great might, signing for the Cowboys, yeah, right? Well, yeah. if Dak gets hurt, then Dalton may realize the seven million, but most likely he's going to get just the bare minimum three million because it's like it's based on like playing seventy percent of the snaps and. Winning two playoff games, winning the Super Bowl. He's got to do all that to make yeah, the seven. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Uh, Beef, tell folks what they can win right now. We'll do caller number – we'll do the first guy to lock in at wow. 641-1010. Uh, caller number one right now is 641-1010. Going to take home our Mother's Day prize pack. It's a Peterbrook Chocolatier Home Activity Kit. Okay. Stay at home with mom and custom make your very own hand dip Peterbrook chocolate treats. In addition, you'll get a $50 gift certificate from Kuhn Flowers. And twenty five dollars to spend at Woody's Barbecue, all part of the Mother's Day gift guide. Find those and other great gift ideas at ten ten XL dot com. Wow, that's wonderful. That uh, and we'll have Doc Kevin Murphy on the other side when we come back right here on the drill.